Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Off 2018. I am here with Stefan Sagmeister. Hello, hello. Hello, and I am your host, Christine Arth. And we are going to talk about all the personal things of Stefan today. All right. <laughs> Not Excellent. having to do with work at all. <laughs> since uh, nobody, or since I never talk about my personal never, stuff, it's myself. Yes, exactly. So that's well, a great idea. I know too idea. much yeah. about you just yeah. from your work history. So that would be boring. <laughs> Excellent. Do go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, he runs Sagmeister and Walsh, which is in New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has Together a Together with Jessica Walsh. Yes, with Jessica Walsh. Yeah. Yes. Um, also a very famous graphic designer. And, uh, you know, you guys have a camera in your office all the time. We do. Have you ever had, like, problems with that? Like, seeing anything you weren't supposed to see? <laughs> well, I don't tend to get on there. I mean, this, is, uh, this really came out of a client project that mm -hmm. ultimately was not uh, implemented. And then it, just around that time, it became time to redesign our own site. Uh -huh. And so we had liked that idea. And originally, for the client project, the camera was supposed to go outside and the buttons were installed in the wall across their offices because they had a wall <laughs> across their offices. But we could never talk any of our neighbors into letting us paint the buttons oh on gosh. their wall or on, the, on top of their roof. Like, just don't you know who I am? Of course, give me the buttons. <laughs> no, we did not. So basically, then we just turned the whole thing around and bent inwards. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, no one's working there today. But it's Saturday. <laughs> it's Saturday. actually, I'm very glad. I think that a very, very good design Maybe office. Maybe they're at least watching you. I don't know. I don't think so, no. <laughs> I think that a properly organized design office should look exactly like this on a Saturday morning, Probably meaning it should be completely office. empty. <laughs> uh, because I do actually feel that uh, we try to... We try to... It's not always the case, but we try to really work very hard during the day yeah, and uh, be organized about it yeah, and then also have some time to recuperate. Well, yeah, yeah. it's good to have a bit yeah. of a work-life balance just yeah, yeah, so yeah. that you can have a happy life. Exactly. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, have you ever seen anyone having sex on there? Like, I have randomly? Not. No? I have not. But I, I, I also keep imagining. Sometimes I'll peek and I'll be like, maybe today's my lucky day. I don't know. No, but I, have, I <laughs> also have to admit, I basically never go on there. Really? It's, it happens, like, if I'm looking something... If I'm looking for something elsewhere on the site, mm -hmm. then to go in, I sometimes see a second of it or so. Uh -huh. But outside of that, I'm never on there. Yeah. Well, it's not but bad. I've heard from many, many, many people that they have the site open while they're working, mm -hmm. and they sort of like see, like you know, sort of like as a little relaxer, yeah. watch <laughs> what what we are doing. But uh, no, but you never I really don't. go on. Yeah. Okay, so there's a question I've been dying to ask you. Actually, please do. <laughs> if you were a fruit. Okay. What fruit would you be and oh. why? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd love to be a mango. Really? Yeah, I'd love to be a mango. Uh, I think that it uh, doesn't look that great on the outside, but it's yeah. fantastic on the inside <laughs> and juicy. <laughs> it's ju oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. 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 I was totally going to go with banana just because they're funny looking and then they also make people laugh. But, you know, they're always... They taste pretty good all the time, consistently pretty good. I think bananas in design are pretty much taken up by Andy Warhol. Yeah. It's sort of like difficult. Kind of like pineapples are all the rage right now. Yeah. But, you know. I think it's difficult to compete with that. Uh, and the client for that thing was a client of ours. Oh, you know, it's Lou Reed yeah. with the Velvet Underground. Yeah, you can't be so a banana then. Yes, yeah, no, yeah, not I at all. I think it's taken. You're definitely yeah. going to be a mango. Yeah. 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 So then if you were going to design a new record cover, would you put yourself as a mango on the front? Hmm, I don't think that a mango, as considering it's a fairly unattractive fruit on the yeah. outside, you probably could do something with it. And incidentally, we actually did very, uh, we did a lot of work for what I think is the world's largest mango producer. Really? Yeah, yeah. We are, uh, we've done a, been a lot of work for a, a brand <laughs> in India called Fruity. Uh -huh. uh, oh, it's yeah. It's a gigantic, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they're, they're, I know they're that enormous brand. and they, they they're create, cute. they're cute. Yeah. And uh, for that, of course, we carried that many, mm -hmm. I would hope, good looking mangoes. Yes. yes. A yeah. lot yeah, of good looking yeah, mangoes. Yeah. You're like, none of the shabby ones. Exactly. Only the good looking mangoes. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's some questions uh, out in the chat right now. Mm -hmm. Anna Carada de Silva is asking, are you on a sabbatical? I am not on a sabbatical, but I just ended one. I was on sabbatical last year. Oh, nice. Uh, I was in Mexico City for uh -huh. a month, in Tokyo for a month, and then oh. another four months in the Austrian Alps. Love Tokyo. So it was fantastic. So yeah. good, yeah. yeah. So I'm currently on sabbatical, so I get it. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are you doing here? 
Uh, hosting. Well, Excellent. I mean, it's kind of a sabbatical, I guess. I'm working, but not working. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the rules for my sabbaticals are just that I'm not allowed to work on anything that's started from the outside. Got it. So, uh, so anything you've already had going or anything you've already been in contact with? No, or? no, 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 no. Like, so basically it has to be, it, it, I, I'm working and I'm working a lot. Right. But uh, on, the only thing that I'm allowed to work on are things that we came up with in the studio. Oh, so, or that, so for personal. So, exactly. Yeah, so it would for yourself be, or how you're going to market and then, Stefan yeah, Segmeister yeah. and Jessica Walsh. Yeah, but not, it's not about PR thing. No, no. no. It's uh, so basically. You're like, I don't need that. <laughs> Well, it's just not such. It's not that interesting to no. work on. But the, uh, uh, both Jessica and I became very interested in the subject of beauty mm -hmm. and how important it is in our lives. Completely. Uh, and so we, uh, I pretty much spent the most time of my sabbatical first researching it, thinking about it, and we are now planning a pretty substantial exhibition on it starting in Vienna this fall. Nice. So that's, uh, that's Where been taken up. Where is it going up. to be? It's starting in Vienna on uh -huh. October 23. Specific venue already uh, taken? Yes. Yeah? Venue is the MAC in Vienna, M-A-K. Nice. Uh, it's a very, very beautiful museum. Yeah. It's 19th century. Yeah. Gorgeous museum. And then it's going to travel from there. Are you going to have, have a Wagner of play in the background? We will not have Wagner <laughs> because, simply because I'm not a Wagner fan, but music will play some sort of role. But we are... Uh, in many, I mean, there's a section on beauty in history, yeah. but ultimately, of course, we are um, talking about beauty as it happens now, and, mm -hmm. and we are only talking about beauty as it happens now, as it's been possibly being made by other human beings. So oh, it would be architects, designers, but also musicians. Right. And we'll have, a, uh, we'll have a section on album covers from the last couple of years because they nice. are specifically beautiful but we also have some music stuff and we actually have even we have uh, one of my favorite bands wrote a song about beauty for us I mean Which I band? dabbled in texting uh, it's a band from Canada called Siski U oh. and it's uh, it's they're not that well known, but I love them. So they they made the song for us. So it's gonna I be love it. Thing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then it's going to be very much more about like widespread artistry versus not just design focus. It's arts in general and beauty yeah. and with yeah. art. Yeah. Or what okay. humans can make. What yeah. humans can make. So it's not about natural beauty or right. human beauty. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I like that. How long uh, have you been working on that? I would say altogether maybe three or four years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So personal projects like this, do they usually take up like a very long part of time yes. and you'll like continue to finesse uh, yeah. and understand what I you're doing? I think that ultimately probably they take about half of our time. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Can I take yes, this of off without, yeah, without, so without see, the thing? Yeah, uh, so see, I knew it. I knew you were going to get naked the whole uh, time. I was like, this no, is what's going to happen. So easy sure, here, I'll I think help. we have the microphone stuck <laughs> in my jacket now. Okay. Oh, okay. Perfect. We've got it. Got it. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So Already next will be the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's think, a little warm. You should I have think, prepared. Yeah, I, I mean. think I'm, a, I'm beyond that phase. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> if you were going to take on a third partner, would you do a posing naked thing with the third partner too? Or it's just too, you've done it. You're over it. I think that uh, we've lived that phase <laughs> in out, the past. Me in the beginning by myself <laughs> and then also uh, when Jessica joined, I, I think that by now it would just be a bore. Yeah, yeah, for now it would be like, maybe in 10 years, you know, when you look vastly different. That, that could, could be fun. Be interesting. Yeah, that exactly. Could be interesting. Like yeah. showing your age. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that could be interesting. I think that by I would say that by the times I'm 80, it might get juicy again. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, it exactly. would be like very kind of yeah. like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and exactly. who knows? You might yeah. not be as fit. <laughs> <laughs> That's even juicier. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think that would be wonderful. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, why you decided to do the happy film. I know that people have seen it, and I know that you're mm -hmm. showing it here today, mm -hmm. but. I know that it came from a place where mm -hmm. you were not really having happiness on your own and you were curious as to how to inspire yourself again. Well, uh, it was a little bit more differentiated. Yeah. Ultimately, the decision to make the film happened at a time when I was doing very well. It yes. was at the previous sabbatical. Uh, I was in Bali. Things were going well. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine complained about the stuff that we were doing, which was pretty much furniture, yeah. and thought it was useless and a, and a waste of my time. And he thought that I was having some sort of responsibility to do something, but 
I think in his words, but 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 people have more from right, and that's at the time I had already done a lot of lectures on happiness. Yeah, and I thought it could be an interesting thing to make a big project about it Completely. because it would force me to really do the research. Yeah, and. Uh, that's basically how it happened. Uh, it also then, and I'll talk about it later today, uh, it probably turned into the most difficult project of my life and definitely into the project, ironically, that brought me the most unhappiness. Yeah. Uh, not just, I mean, part of that was by happenstance because as soon as I had made that decision, my mom died and oh. the very long term, the longest term relationship of my life ended. Yeah. So after I had made the decision, when I was still happy, three or four months into it, I was profoundly unhappy <laughs> and then really had a reason to basically work on that. Yeah. And uh, it, but then there were many, many other things, things that happened within so did it change your perception yeah. and your yeah. perspective of what you were doing throughout the process? Yes. Did it change the entire project, yeah. in fact, from the beginning to the end? It did. Yeah. And it, uh, it also just basically, I had then, well, we started trying to make a film on general happiness. Yeah. That turned out to be not possible because yeah. it was too big, too unwieldy. So hard to quantify yeah. what happiness yeah. is for us swath of people. Also, I'm not an expert at it, so yeah. I, I felt silly <laughs> to say this works and this didn't if yeah. I'm not, I, I, I don't have a PhD in psychology yeah, or like, like, you know, just this is it, guys. Yeah, and they're all yeah. like, should we trust him? Exactly. <laughs> he doesn't exactly. know what he's talking yeah. about. <laughs> so almost by default, I was forced into doing a film on my own happiness, mm -hmm. which made sense because I'm an expert Well, here. you can quantify that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, I didn't. it took me a long time to realize that this would also mean that this would then basically be a film about me. Yeah. Uh, which... Was that alarming when you saw it for the first time? You know what? The same friend, the same friend who caused the whole thing. Yeah, you're his like, name that, is George, that asshole. And, you know, at one time, <laughs> like four or five years into the project, said, well you're making a film about yourself. And I said, I'm not no. making a film about myself. You're like, that's rude. <laughs> and, uh, but then of course. You were, <laughs> you kind of were. Yes. So, you're like, uh, I didn't mean it, it just happened. Uh, <laughs> I mean, ultimately, uh, ultimately, I'm very glad that I'm here today being able to talk about the film and it's over. Yeah. Like I'm very it glad that this chapter for it to is be gone. gone. You're like it's I'm gone. happy cuz it's yeah. done. <laughs> I think part of my happiness now comes from the fact that the pain is not there anymore. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, and I read recently that you got engaged. Yeah, but that's Congratulations. That, yeah, but that's already gone again. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask you are you going to design your own wedding invitations cuz I know I would. <laughs> No, that is that is part of the film, and I mean the whole engagement thing yes. is very much part of the story of the film, mm -hmm. and uh, it uh, that was it's it's also part of the film that like the breakup I is really also at the very very end. I really gotta read my tabloids. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can luckily, you blame me? I think very much luckily, uh, <laughs> that I think it's one of the one of the most fantastic things about graphic design. Yeah, is that there is zero tabloid attention. It completely. Yeah. I mean, I had to really search yeah. for it. I'm yeah. letting you know this. Yeah. <laughs> it was not easy to find some facts on your background. <laughs> I mean, your personal background. <laughs> good. Um, so yeah, good, right? Yeah. Uh, so one of the questions is, do you have any advice for young designers starting out? And I feel like it's a pretty obvious question, but I'm curious if you can put a spin on it as to sure. say for this market and in this day and age when people are graduating, where do they go? What do they do? What would you do if you were them now? Yeah. So I would, let's say, if, so you just graduated. Yeah, let's say yeah. you just graduated. Yeah. Like, you're young Stefan, yeah. and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm definitely yeah. not going to work for Leo Burnett yeah. forever. So so in this case, <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would sit down, take 20 minutes, a piece of paper, and I would write where I would see myself in three years from now. Mm -hmm. I would describe exactly what my workplace looks like, mm -hmm. what I'm looking over, what kind of pieces I'm working on, uh, what kind of jobs I'm doing, mm -hmm. how my boss uh, feels, mm -hmm. if it's a large or small company, what kind of work they are doing. Yeah. And then I would let that piece of paper sit for a couple of days mm -hmm. and then I would 
look for studios that really get close to there. And I would learn, I would work for those for a studio like this. I would then do everything to get a job with that studio. Yeah. And I wouldn't apply for 50 jobs, but no. I would apply for very, very few, but really find out about them and really put all my all your work effort, efforts into getting passion. Yeah. Yes. Getting a job with one of those studios. And then I would work with those with one of those studios for a number of years, mm -hmm. learn everything I can, mm -hmm. and then open a similar studio myself. That's what I would Oh, do. gosh, that's what I did. <laughs> or I mean, Excellent. what I'm yeah. in the process of. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. I'm glad that you just clarified that what I'm doing is okay. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yes, chat, feel free to ask some questions. This is pretty epic having Stefan here at our beck and call. So, you know, if not then, then now. And I have a question. Sure. Saul Bass or Frank Lloyd Wright? Who would you rather have dinner with? Saul Bass, uh, simply because I've read quite a bit about both of them and he seems the much nicer guy. Yeah, much yeah. more like colloquial when he talks. Yeah, yeah. and I seem just a very, back. like from my feeling from just reading, like I read a lot of letters from Frank uh -huh. and he just, he seemed not somebody that's very warm. Yeah, a little And stern. so while I saw a couple of interviews with Saul, I've mm -hmm. never met neither, and uh, that seemed incredibly wonderful. Also, I saw one interview with him where he talked extensively about beauty yeah. in a very, very smart yeah. kind of way. He talked about beauty not as a function, mm -hmm. which we also tend to talk about it, but he talked about this as beauty as a necessity for what it means to be human. Yeah, and he said basically drive. he talked about beauty as a necessary goal for any designer, not not because it would work better, which we talk a lot about, mm -hmm. but because it's the only way to stay human. Totally. And it's, uh, uh, I thought it was wonderful. Uh, so yes, I, I, it's so uh, clear, uh, clear, yes. And yeah. then if you had to have sex with one of them after dinner, well, I'm not gay, choose? so that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a hypothetical yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about uh, when you first started out at Sagmeister, before mm -hmm. Walsh was there. Yeah. Was it nerve-wracking being on your own? Were you terrified at all, or were you very confident with the choice, and did you feel like it was the right step? I felt it was the right step. Yeah. Like it's, uh, I had worked for... Uh, I had already opened a design studio mm -hmm. for a big ad agency in Hong Kong. And so I kind of knew roughly a little bit about business and how to run this thing. Right. Then I had worked for my big hero for Tibor Kalman at Emman Company mm -hmm. and uh, felt that it was time to open up my own thing. Yeah. And I very much had an idea for how that studio would look like. I wanted it to be small mm -hmm. and I wanted it to be involved with the music industry. And that possibility to run a small studio with a couple of people yeah. and uh, really do visualization, like visualize music yeah. seemed very juicy to me. Like when I thought about it, I had a warm feeling in my belly. It just yeah. felt the right thing like to do. Like home. Yeah. yeah. And at the same time, I have two older brothers uh -huh. who both are in business and who scared the shit out of me for about running the business properly, uh -huh. and, but also gave me some advice, like, yeah. you know, that you need to have some sort of system of... Right, bookkeeping. For example, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That you need to have an idea of how much money has to come in right. and how much money you're spending. Exactly. And uh, because, specifically my middle brother, who is a quite aggressive business person, very mm -hmm. successful, sort of thought, if you don't do that, you're going to lose much more money than if you sit on the beach. Totally. Then it's easier because I had saved some money from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. He said that that money is going to last you longer yeah. if you sit on the beach and do nothing exactly. than if then you if run an unsuccessful small completely. design business. Yeah. And so I was, I was scared of that. Obviously, I didn't want to lose that money. Right. So uh, uh, I think that that talking to did me well. Yeah. But ultimately, I do feel for all of you and for you who are about to start a business, mm -hmm. it's very easy. Yeah. Like, it's basically... <laughs> You're like, I anyone think, can do it. I'm like, no, great. <laughs> no, I, I really believe it. Let's say, like, in the world, in the, uh, in the bigger world of design, yeah. running a 
a communication design studio, be right. that online or be that web-based or be that physical things mm -hmm. or be that print-based, doesn't matter, is ultimately among the easiest of things. Because, let's say, like, uh, I know a lot of fashion designers. Right. I think it's much more difficult to be a fashion designer than well, to be in graphics. Yes. It's so ubiquitous. Yeah. And it's, you are caught into this, in this strange world. If you do something that sells, then the press stuck. is going to ignore you. Yeah. If you do something that gets a lot of press, mm -hmm. nobody's going to buy it. There's, mm -hmm. there's many, many difficulties there for a young designer. Kind of like music. Musicians yeah. are very similar in yeah. that way, where they yeah. get stuck in a track because they like that song that they did, and they're like, make 10 more. Yeah. And they get ostracized when they make something interesting and avant-garde. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think in graphics, it's, it's, it's truly much easier. If you, I would say this, what you need is common sense. Mm -hmm an ability to make things happen, mm -hmm. and then a, design, a, a desire to do good work. Exactly. If you have those three, you're going to do really well. I think that's great life advice by Stefan. Thank ah, you very much. Ah. And then someone was asking about Tibor Kalman. What was it like working with him? They wanted to wonderful. know. Wonderful. It was wonderful. Yeah. Like, it, like, he has been, he had been at that point my hero for a long time. Uh -huh. I had contacted him when I was a student, and uh, he, after, I was very relentlessly calling the company. You were the squeaky wheel, weren't I you? Was, You're like, yeah. somebody give him some oil and make <laughs> him shut up. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, after a long time, I wound up working there. Uh -huh. And uh, I would say that one of the more surprising things that I learned there was how important Tibor's almost superhuman ability to sell something yeah. influenced the quality of the work. Amazing. And I think it was my f the first time that at Emma Company that I figured out that the ability to design obviously is important. Yes. But at the same time, many other abilities, including yes. the ability to make things happen and the ability to also sell something totally. to a client. Yeah, you can't just be good really, at one thing. Yeah, it's are it's very not much what important. a multifaceted yeah. designer means anymore. Exactly. And yeah. ever, actually. Yeah. I yeah. don't think that multifaceted designer means like you do different types of design. Yeah. It means you can design, you can sell, you can present, yeah. and then you can also yeah. like do the books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that in... but. In other places, that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Let's say, like, I have architects' friends where these, uh, that where you have very the abilities in going in various directions. Like, yeah. you know, in architecture, it's incredibly it's important broad. to be a to be a politician. Mm. And I don't mean this negatively, no. but you really, if you have 500 people involved in your project, yes. you better be a politician yeah. to order to get all those working in the same direction. Exactly. And the same would be true for if you do film, or if you do a big time film, I mean, that that's all part of it. Does, so it's still fairly overseeable mm -hmm. as uh, in graphic design, but I would say those three that I mentioned are very much at the center. Yeah. I agree. So what about your specific creative approach do you think differentiates yourself from other designers? It's a great question, Daniel Sherman. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that in the studio in general, not just me personal, but in the studio in general, I think we try to do work that touches people, mm -hmm. which roughly means that we want to do work that's emotional. And specifically, coming from where I come from, Austria, Germany, Switzerland, mm -hmm. where the Bauhaus came yeah, from and cold. where modernism was really started, <laughs> yes. that's kind of unusual. Yes. And uh, where things tend to be cold mm -hmm. and, you know... Structured, militant. Swiss layouts, yes. exactly. <laughs> and I just found growing up that as a viewer, much of this work had no, didn't capture me. Mm -hmm. That it just basically, it was not only cold, it also left me cold as a viewer. Yeah. And so we tried to be, we tried to make work that's much more human, mm -hmm. that can be that it looks human, that can also include stuff that are clearly handmade, right. meaning it looks like it's been made by other humans, Yeah. but it also, from a content perspective, like is really one human talking to another human. Yeah. In the same way that, like, you know, let's say in, if we now, what does that mean in the world of commercial graphics? Right. Well, the default way that corporations talk to their customers is in a modernist layout, mm -hmm. be it online, meaning if you look at even 
what an interface, not just layout, what an interface looks like. It right. doesn't matter from Facebook, if I look on my phone or from Facebook, mm -hmm. from Etsy, from, from Twitter, they're all based on corporate layouts created by Jan Chichold in the 1920s yeah. at the height of the modernist revolution. Stuff that Chichold hated 50 <laughs> years later, that he couldn't stand, that he thought was totally fascist <laughs> and illegible. That shit is still completely still dominating yeah. our world. It's everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. So we think yeah. that that's a mistake and we think that that should change and I we like think it. that all of these interfaces would be much more successful, mm -hmm. but they don't even try them out. No. I can guarantee you, I mean, well, I assume, but I'm almost positive that I know for sure yeah. that there is nobody at Facebook right now who has ever tried out beauty as a strategy properly for, for their company. Well, that it's sounds like, like a all, mighty challenge. It's all functionalism, <laughs> functionalism, functionalism. And I think I have a, a theory that I can't prove yet, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm trying to get a scientific uh, institute interested in showing it. I like this. I, my guess is that the reason that there is so much aggression mm -hmm. online, that like, I don't know people in my personal life who are as aggressive as they are on Twitter oh, or they are on Facebook. Well, it's because there's no face to it. If they were there being interviewed that and they were a, actually yes. saying the words that yeah. they're saying and typing in Twitter, yeah. it would be a very different place. I think you're totally <laughs> right. And you know? I would add to that, I suspect that the reason that it's all so ugly yeah. is, also is also contributing to that the interface ugliness. Design? Yes. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Completely, I and agree. I look, if I... If it was friendly and nice looking, yeah. I mean, like, even the colors behind us, yeah. they are more inviting. Yeah. So, of course, we're going to yeah. have more fun. Yeah. Look, if I'm in yeah. New York, the ugliest New York... The, no, the ugliest behaviors of New Yorkers that I, that I notice mm -hmm. is at... JFK and at Penn Station. <laughs> totally. Nowhere do <laughs> I see people. <laughs> nowhere do I see people to be so out of kind behavior yeah, than at Penn elements. Station or or, or or La Gaudia. Yeah. And the same people don't behave that badly uh, when they are no, at, at Grand a Central shop yeah, or, or at Grand Central, yeah. which is really comparable because it's they're beautiful. also at a hurry at a hurry at Grand Central. Yeah. People are not more hurried by the by uh, by the trains agree. at Penn it's like Station. The DMV. Than when you go to the DMV, people are irritating, irritatingly yeah. terrible. Yeah. They're but also it's also very ugly a offices. terrible, suppressed-looking, exactly. institutionalized yes. constraint. Yeah. So of course they would yeah. be. So well, that's my two cents to that. I completely loved yeah. it. Excellent. We are going to transition into a uh, portfolio review. We have David Ducou here, okay. and he's going to come in in just a second. Perfect. Portfolio review. Fifteen minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. also perfect. So quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, we are Hello. back, and hola. We are here hola. with David Deku, and we are also here with Stefan Sagmeister. This is Stefan. This is David. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, well, hello, welcome. Everyone. We are going Thank to look you. at David's portfolio today and get Excellent. some very amazing feedback, critical or not, from okay. Stefan. Please. All right. <laughs> Let's take a look. So, David, why don't you tell us a little Do bit the about yourself? Do people online also see David's portfolio? Oh, yes, can they, they can see everything. We're actually, Excellent. Can they see, can see everything? What they see. Wonderful. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, tell us a little bit about yourself, yeah. your background, and what your focus is. Well, um, I, um, I'm a graphic designer that just is started studying in, uh, here in Spain, in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a, in a school, it's called Sardi back in Amposta, and then I moved to Manchester just to polish a little bit more like my creative skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I was there, I was kind of like struggling just to find like a, my place over there. So I was just kind of, even struggling with, with a minimum basic like communication, like mm -hmm. language. So mm -hmm. I just started from, from scratch. Mm -hmm. And my mates were working also, uh, uh, they were at a university and in, they encouraged me just to join the university with them. I was okay. like, okay, why not? Why not? Let, let's sure, do it. Let's why do not? It. Let's learn. Why not? Let's yeah. do it. Let's <laughs> do it. And then just right after university, the things start coming very fast soon one after the other and then just I just find myself in this uh, 
a creative uh, marketing agency in mm -hmm. Manchester. It's called Q Marketing, mm -hmm. and so we are, and um, that's what I'm doing right now. At the moment. Excellent, wonderful. Cool. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's take a look through your work. Uh, Stefan, do you want to choose something? Are we, we are looking at work that has uh -huh. been published, or this is work that has been done on spec, or work that's been done as a student? Tell us a little well, bit about the overview. Well, as an overview, uh, this, is, this is my... Uh, um, I got quite a few projects here that uh, some of them they are not published, some of them they are uh, like a side project, side experimental mm -hmm. uh, yeah. practice that I do on, okay. carry on my Excellent. own. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So this book that you see here is just a... Uh, well, that's the CD. This one? Well, we you can, I go can go, well, I can go in that one. Sure. Right? All can, right. I can go in this one. So this one is for uh, for uh, uh, an artist. It's called uh, Big Diamond. Yeah. Uh, this guy, he is a, a, a rapper, and he is yeah. from Africa, and he came to me and was like, hey, mate, can you actually design like any nice cover for my like uh, yeah. uh, uh, my uh, my last hit? And mm -hmm. he actually, he's in a SoundCloud, and you mm -hmm. can't find it in there, and so he has like a, this digital uh, a cover there. Yeah. So the uh, the thing, the, the cool thing of this is that the, uh, what you see in here of the uh, Africa is all actually being carried by hand. Yeah. So it's actually hand cut to yeah. create yeah. like this uh, uh, shades of uh, yeah. of uh, of um, what is African on and inspired yeah. for uh, his What kind of music well. is it? It's uh, it's all about hip hop. It's hip hop okay. and sort of or rap. Yeah. And um, he's really into this. That's why I made like the typography in that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. The suite, as you see here, the word is that's a 3D mm. render sure. that I did. Yeah. And um, I tend to actually match like what's mm. like uh, offline to online. Yeah. And um, and uh, because. I'm, since I'm in this, uh, in this um, agency, everything is like more digital, everything like so in the screen. So, so I mm -hmm. just try to keep like some of my side projects more like yeah. out of the screen sometimes. Well, I'd say uh, what I like about it is that it's iconic, which is now mm -hmm. very, uh, very important because, you know, things are sometimes online mm. shown in this tiny, tiny, tiny way. So I mm. think to create a quick visual icon is important for the artist. Mm -hmm. What I'm less crazy about here is that I have the impression that you are saying something twice. Like, you know, we see the African map, uh -huh. and at the same time, the title is Sweet Africa. Uh -huh. So, like, I'm feeling that, like, I prefer... Repetitive. Like, yeah, it's repetitive. I prefer things that take me further. Uh -huh. You know, let's say that one, the visual says one thing, okay. the text says another thing, and together they say a third thing. Okay. So basically that my mind mm -hmm. has to put the two together, and the third thing is built in my mind. Therefore, as a viewer, uh -huh. therefore, my mind is more engaged in the whole thing. Like, if you remember the very, very, you probably don't, but let's say mm -hmm. Apple computer in the late 80s, early uh -huh. 90s, had said Apple computer and it had an Apple. And it Definitely. was completely bullshit because yeah. <laughs> it, said it, it, it just said it twice and you didn't mm -hmm. get to be involved. I found that their, their identity became interesting once they killed the Apple computer yeah. and you basically not now, meaning now it reads super fast, mm -hmm. but in that in-between period, mm -hmm. you had to say, oh, it's the Apple from Apple Computer, which made it basically almost mm -hmm. completed a little mind puzzle, uh -huh. which engaged the viewer. Let's move on. All okay. right. Great. What's next? Uh, well, I would like to show you something that, let me show you. Yep. Okay, let's jump into, uh, I would like to show you this one, because Perfect. this one is uh, like something, that's an great. experimental yeah. typography yeah. that mm -hmm. I did. But I like to show you, because this is like kind of my, my star from Man in Manchester. Okay. Because when I first started in Manchester, this is something very, very, very yeah. like a, a showing like sort of behind the scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is what happened with the graphic design. Well, I feel like this because when I just first arrived to a place, no language, no communication at all, mm -hmm. and I was like working in a, in a potato place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we have this uh, a fast food uh, company over there. Yeah. And uh, well, I'm still carrying on with some sort of. Uh, Creative uh, mm -hmm. development. So uh, we used to we do like uh, baking potatoes. So I yeah. what I gonna do with a bunch of potatoes? So let's take yeah. some time with it. Yeah. Why not? So and then I create those uh, print print pota uh, potato prints, pretty much in typography. Yeah. And then I uh, uh, literally bake it in the oven. 
And so what what's the, what did you print with? What's this? What's this? Yeah. Uh, it, what's this ink? What's this paint? Oh, it's, like, ju it's, just, it's just a white oil. So if okay. you scroll up down here, it's like yeah. a it's like a white oil thing here. Okay. So yeah. It's like a white oil here, which actually grabs anything that falls in there. Okay. And when is it grabbing there? So it just sticks together there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Then I just you can you just simply just shake it off. And a why did bit. It, why did it need baking? Pardon? Why did it need baking? Because of my background in baking potatoes. Okay. I uh, literally like, okay, I do yeah. baking potatoes okay. every yeah. bloody day. So okay. I'm going to do something with this okay. and bake my typography. Actually, <laughs> I yeah, yeah, can yeah, yeah, bake yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the typography in, in the oven. So yeah. oh, sorry for the language. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so the result actually blends and melts together yeah. and uh -huh. gives that shiny effect, very rustic that I, uh, that I love into yeah. like uh, keeping me out from the screens, as I said before, and yep. stick with more like a handcraft. Uh, wonderful. So I think I like everything about it. I think that I like that the, that the, the process is very experimental, but it that is. the form is still quite contained. I mean, there's a mm. conservativeness to this form, and mm -hmm. the two work really well, because I actually mm -hmm. have not seen that sort of, I mean, you know, obviously I've seen O's like this uh -huh. before, or P's like this before, or even S's like this before, uh -huh. but I haven't seen them in quite that structure. Uh -huh. And so, uh, so I like this tension between conservative form, but uh -huh. innovative, uh, innovative process to, cr to end yeah. up with that form. Uh, I think I also like the work intensity of this. Mm -hmm. I was always a fan of, I think in Brian Eno's uh, diary, he at one time writes, a good, a good strategy to create something new is to uh -huh. do something that's so work intensive that nobody else bothers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I think that you fulfill <laughs> that Amazing. quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, so Thank you. a good job. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very Thank good point, you. So indeed. <laughs> Oh gosh, I What's I would next? like to show something which is probably probably most of you already heard or seen something about the news about Manchester terror attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So the thing I was in uni back at this time and I was working in my typography mm -hmm. and I uh, I was working in this typography that I wanted to create out of wood. So it's, it's a it's a mobile type wooden uh, type mm -hmm. and I was working on back in the moment and then the the well. The, ha the tragedy happens, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I incorporated some uh, um, ornamental features from the Gothic Cathedral, Manchester, Manchester Cathedral, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is, uh, if you scroll to up, uh, so you see it's like all this like sure. ornamentation yeah. here. I just incorporated it into uh, existing yeah. typography, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So just leave that clear. And I incorporated also, there's an 1800s map from, uh, from the Central Library. Yeah to use it as a background, and uh, this is a way how it's working with Should it. Should we watch the video? Well, if you, ca you can play it. Can, can we play that? Yes, of course. Let me see. There uh, we go. Yeah. So I can explain it because it's like, I don't, I don't want it to go. It's, it's a little bit long, but. We get the picture, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, you can yeah, get yeah. the picture sure, sure, of this. Sure, sure, so you yeah. just mm -hmm. actually, just literally yeah. just using some ornamental features from yeah. the from the. These the ornamental are like turn of the century, like around sort of like the end of the 19th century, or what, what period is that? Uh, well, the uh, the uh, cathedral, the cathedral was ruined and then was rebuilt after the the Second World mm -hmm. War. Okay. But the the ornamental is pretty new, but it, they still kind of stick with this uh, very uh, uh, flourishness yeah. of uh, mm -hmm. of um, leaves. But I cannot yeah. really tell uh, how old that okay. was, to be honest, in the top yeah. of my mind. But yeah. Um, and so I used this ornamentation. I created those the, the base and some kind of just in the kerning as yeah. possible. I know it's very hard to keep the, the right kerning for this. Yeah. So I, I vectorize every image, mm -hmm. all the ornamentation, and put it all into the laser cutter. Yeah. And then obviously because it's all uh, wood, so yeah. it actually generates, generates this oil. And then it's all handcrafted job, yeah. which is actually just sand it down nice. and sure. get it clean. And we have this uh, massive letter press, yeah. which is a ruler. And then pass it through, yeah. ink it, and pass it through, and uh, uh, there you got it. Cool. Nice. Uh, that's uh, one of those phrases yeah, from yeah, yeah, Manchester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's about uh, and God created this. Uh, God created 
Manchester. That's an existing phrase in Manchester. Yes, I mean, you sort of like I say, yeah, yeah. And then, so I create my version of that phrase, yeah. which is this one down here that you can see. Yeah. And I incorporated the, the map on the background with screen uh, printing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you got yeah. screen printing, letterpress, uh, all in one. So yeah. that's a. Uh, and then what did you do with the poster then? Is this just basically for sale or how does that work? Well, the thing is I did it as a response after the, the terror yeah. attack and many artists in Manchester, many uh, um, uh, designers and artists in Manchester, they come together and they, br they brought like a, a series of pieces to, to create a book and, uh, and to collect some uh, uh, fundraising as well. Okay, mm. so it was a fundraising piece ultimately yeah. that was auctioned off, that sort of thing? Yes, Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. I so mean, uh, and yeah, that's, that's you like intensive much it. work, don't you? I uh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, this is wonderful. Uh, I think that's about. We'll wrap this up, and then we have another portfolio to review online. But okay. David, really lovely to have you. Oh, and thank you very much, Casper. Thank you. Me. Nice yes. to see you. And see great you. work. You've got a lot of praise in the see chat. You so. then. Oh yes. my <laughs> so I know so you'll so have this. to rewind and look see, at this. I like oh. the color. Very nice they idea. Like the oh, I love the embossing. Ornate, <laughs> exactly. Thanks. Love the Super type. work All right. intensive. Oh. All <laughs> yes. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> so Super much. Cool. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. All right. We have one more portfolio to review, and this is an online portfolio. So it's Laura. Lauren Osoba, yeah. she's a graphic designer in Kansas City. Okay. And she says that by day, an illustrator, and by night, and then currently living in Kansas. While mm -hmm. she's not designing, she likes collecting illustration maps, city guides, reading design books, blogs, and magazines. Okay. And Wes Anderson movies. Yeah. I like you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so hopefully, Lauren will join us in the chat. But until then, we can look through her portfolio and start anywhere you'd like. Okay. I don't know. Let's <laughs> click on. Oh, let's click on this little thing. All right. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Hi, Simon. Hi, Tim Mobest. Thanks for joining us, guys. All right. Well, this looks interesting, interesting. already. Low this and behold. Okay, so this is a single. Huh. Well, we would. It looks I think like it would a book be, cover. Yeah, but we could. Uh, meaning, look and see, but I think we would. This seems very much like a uh, laser cut book cover. Uh huh. And of course, we would benefit from having her join us so that she could talk a little bit about what, yes. what it is. Because right from the cover itself, considering it's spiral bound, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, see, so there might be pages in there probably, and it's like Maybe. the, two, the, two, the yeah. two wooden covers, yeah? yeah? It's, I would say, see, I'm normally not a huge fan uh -huh. of wooden book covers, simply because they always deteriorate. No, they seem so studency to me. Oh, yeah. Because it's very difficult to get this done with the big, unpractical spiral bound right. binding in real life. And so uh, uh, I've not been an enormous fan, and considering I've seen probably thousands, thousands of, of books. student books in my life, <laughs> I've probably seen a couple of dozen wooden covers. Oh, yeah. And But in this case, <laughs> I, I definitely like the graphics of it. I yeah. think that the, uh, the, simple, uh, the simplicity works well with these easy mm -hmm. look-throughs, but I'm not 100% sure what's going on in no, between I or what the reason for it is. I want to see something behind them. Exactly. Like I want to see like another color or like Possibly. something yeah, behind yeah, there. Yeah. So right. is, uh, is she joining us? Lauren you know? has not joined yet. But okay, I so then let's look at something else. Let's look at something else. Yeah, you yes. pick something. Uh, hmm. Let's go with this. Okay. Okay, we clearly have a stationery for at city some center. sort of golf center, mm. golf something something. Very what is golf. it? Uh, yeah. It looks like golf. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty. Uh, I like, like the, the patterns. Yeah, yes, the I patterns like the patterns. Uh, I think the typography is totally fine. Uh-huh. Uh, it oh, feels like oh, a clubhouse. So it is a clubhouse. I, I think go. it seems... You know what oh, this is? Oh, Lauren's on now. She says, okay. can you switch over to my Adobe portfolio website? Just built it in and need feedback. Why, okay. sure. Can yes. you do that? Yes, Rufus yeah. is going to help us. Oh, okay. hey, Uncle Rufus. <laughs> Special guest. Adobe portfolio? Well, in the meantime, I do like the pattern. I'm a big pattern fan. Yeah. 
And I think the type, the type is totally fine. Yeah, Maybe, completely. but I would say for Another special for guest. Anything. Hey, Michael. Uh, uh, <laughs> we need 15 people. We need 15 yeah. people. That's right. Clearly. This is good. Actually, yeah. I just all wanted to be really close okay, to you. Here They're we jealous go. of oh, me yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So, okay. All right. So, Lauren, if there's any specific project you want us to look at, just say the project and we will get there. <laughs> and thanks for submitting. For those of you who haven't already submitted, there's still time to submit. We think we have one more review later today. I mean, until we wait for the next project or what uh, Lauren um, wants no, us I to see. No, I think we can move ahead, So yeah. then uh, maybe what I would say about the fair race is that the main visual here, like the flag in the hole, mm -hmm. mm, I'm not 100% sure about. Uh, you might not need it. Well, mostly also because it's such a cliche. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're dealing with cliches, which is possible to deal with, right. but if you do deal with cliches, I think you need to have a visual idea that shows it in a way that we haven't seen it before. Right. Something and quite ironic. Case, or, yeah, or, or something that's just more beautiful, mm -hmm. more unusual, like, you know, a, a flag in a hole can mm -hmm. be shown. It's difficult because, of course, we've already seen well, hundreds of them. Well, you're already getting the flag with the pattern, yeah. so you don't need to have it in the logo yeah. as well. Yeah. So uh, let's choose something else. Yes, let's choose let's, one. Uh, I don't know. Let's choose this thing. Kansas Leadership Center. Cloud in, uh, All right. Lawmakers may vote differently based on whether they represent urban, rural, or suburban areas. Rural, suburban, so the leadership center. Okay, description. Urban a series of infographics to, academy, to accompany an article in the journal. Okay, so it's infographics for a journal article published. Kansas Leadership Center article discusses. Okay. So, All right. okay. Color palette. How yeah. done it? This is, I would say this is very clear and pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicely and I like, it in its, yeah. it, I like it it's in its very, very minimal, clear version. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the colors are fine. I think that it could be in its clarity and it's in its minimalism. I would wish there would be a more joyous aspect to it also. Like that there would be, I don't know, a little hidden fun element mm -hmm. or something, something that goes against cheeky. it or like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. have a little cat come out here or like, you know. <laughs> or one yellow person in there. <laughs> yeah, or like add something that sort of like to be, add a little joy to this. Yes, yeah? a little but sneakiness, from I a like visual, that. <laughs> from a visual perspective, I think it's beautiful. Good. All right, what okay, next? Okay, you choose the next one. I'm going to go with the tacos just because okay, why because not? Because you like tacos? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're all right, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's take a look. So, Dos Taqueria is a concept for a Tex-Mex restaurant. Yeah. We got that. Very clear. Hmm. I think, again, very pretty, very clear. A li if I would... I think this is fine and, uh, and really works that way. What I would say is in the next project, try to go. I think it needs to feel more realistic. There's no, there's no money or uh, costs. There's like a, some From information that that's yes. yeah. like yeah. needed. I would agree there. Yeah. So that, like that in real life, this it. thing yeah. would, would probably have much more typography yeah. on it. Also much more, much more description. Like right. I'm normally not ordering Beef. Just taco. I'm ordering, or like, oh, oh sorry, the beef yeah. is, oh, oh, it's a taco beef with the extra here, yeah, but there yeah. would have to be a price, there would have to right. be some sort of like description of where the beef comes from, and I guess. And the name of the restaurant yes. on top, just so yeah. that, you know, if you are the restaurant yeah. owner, you want to see your logo yeah. on multiple things. And in addition to that, I would say, like, I've seen quite a bit of hipster taco places now. Totally, that with like an X logo, yeah, and it's yeah. like taco, this, yeah. this, that. But it should yeah. be, I think it should go the next step further. Like, mm -hmm. I think that this world, like, let's say, like, you know, the distress type, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the full uh, uh, hand printed type, we've seen quite a lot of that. So I yes. think that visually it should now, like, basically, I think we're, this is where this world are, also the wooden board with the metal clamp. Mm -hmm. I think that... It's there, would, it exists. It, yeah, it exists. It should now go the it, next step. Yeah. yeah. Take it further. Yeah. Okay, I think we have time for one more. And okay. then, well, then let's I'll just chat some. your ear off. Sure. <laughs> let's what do you, what do you look want? at these buttons here. Okay, great. 
the other elevation elevation lab. Classes it's and workshops help entrepreneurs soar with Spark Track for startups. Okay. So, for startup right. things, yeah. Branding an icon system for the focus. Mm hmm. Nice. Okay. Mm, no. No, I don't like it. <laughs> no, I think that that's. If this is startups. I think this is not new enough. This seems like this typography uh -huh. is just too conservative for me. Like I've seen hundreds of those. And I think that just colors with a shape on it. An icon, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I think that out of the projects that we've seen, this is probably my least favorite. I also... It's bright, but it doesn't have any meaning. Yeah, yeah. It's, and let's say helping entrepreneurs soar, no. Anyone no, can do that. Yeah, you have to have a mission statement uh, yeah. that's more unique. But also from a wording perspective, if I see like, like uh, this seems, if I'm very like, if I'm very negative and I'm over, I'm being overly negative just to make the point. Mm -hmm. This is more like an innovation lab in Albania. You know, yeah. this is not <laughs> like uh, I can't quite see this happening in the center of San Francisco or Silicon no, Valley because no. it just, it's just... It doesn't have enough we've content. We've seen this too often. Yeah. Like I'm, not, I'm not excited about this. And I think that part of an identity like this uh, will need to be exciting because, I mean, Completely. it's supposed to be new. It's supposed to be, let's go in, let's go into a direction creating startups that don't exist because, you know, startups they that do exist innovative. don't really make sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. exactly. Well, I think that that is, that's all the time we have but, for uh, our portfolio review. In general, Lauren, good project. Yes, good, good project, going. Lauren, yeah. and yeah. really great body of work. Yeah. We really appreciate you sending Thank your you. portfolio Thank to get you. critiqued. There'll yeah. be more of that. And um, I'm curious because on your Instagram, you had done some open critique a little mm -hmm, while ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe that's something you'll do again. I'll definitely go back to that. Yeah. I think that uh, there were a lot of people who wrote to me and who had, who had appreciated that. Yeah. Or uh, right now, like, uh, oh, I found that on Instagram it's good to mix it up. Yeah. So right now we are like you're you learning know, about Instagram. Looking, I like that. You're like it's yeah. good to mix it up. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we look uh, like right now I'm looking at pieces that people find beautiful mm -hmm. and people send things in that they find that they find beautiful. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, at, at one time, you know, uh, going back to critiquing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah. heard it here. If you want to send and fill and flood his inbox with beautiful things for him to critique, Please <laughs> he's do. really excited about it. Do. Uh, it's <laughs> at Stefan Sagmeister. Oh, wow. Stefan with an F. Look at that. Yeah. You're just giving all the good things away. Yeah. <laughs> Email address and everything. Do you want the phone yeah. number? Should you say your phone number? <laughs> just, uh, I'm just you know, kidding. It's, well, actually, it's pretty, it's pretty published. So I'm it's just not, kidding. Yeah, I'm it's just pretty kidding. published. He yeah. doesn't have a phone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, have this a phone. was wonderful. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming in, and thank you so much. It was such a good conversation. It was a yeah, wonderful. it was a pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So stay tuned, Thanks for everyone. Listening. And um, Kathleen and Marianne will be on next. So thank you very much. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you.